Okay, oh. here we go. Here we go. We're back. <laughs> Happy hour with Heather and guest episode number 48. And uh, we have a new background, which you'll have seen ahead of time because I will have edited it in. That's that's tough to say, edited it in. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm joined, as always, by my colleague and counterpart uh, and and the the person who gives their name to the show, Heather. So welcome. Hello. Thank you. And uh, today it was my turn to select the bands. So we're going to listen to a group called Potion from uh, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Uh, I believe it's a one-person operation uh, in the band Ain't from Abruzzo, Italy. Um, and then Mothman uh, and the Thunderbirds. Uh, and they he, I think, another one-person operation. Yeah. Was split recently. So we'll be listening to two tracks off of his split but uh jumping right in potion uh from new sydney new south wales oh was that was that one of the dogs yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> they like potion <laughs> they do yes who wouldn't um yeah no i well that it's interesting because like potion is one of those bands that i was always aware of like they were always on the periphery, but I hadn't really listened to their music. And then I saw the bass player Stella Lung participate. There's a show out of St. Vitus in New York City in Brooklyn called Two Minutes to Late Night, which is like a, which is hosted by a guy named Guarcinio Hall, which I loved, who wears corpse makeup and interviews bands. And I guess during the pandemic, they started doing um music videos so they would get musicians to cover songs but they would live stream the broadcast from wherever the musician was so i'm guessing that uh, the bass player for potion was in australia when she recorded her segment but there's an excellent video of her and gina gleason from baroness and a few other people whose names escape me they do a uh, uh, twist of cane by danzig I think it's called Twist of Cain. I know that I know the tracks, by, but you can find it on YouTube. There are a lot of great videos. So anyway, um, Potion was one of those bands that I was always like, yeah, we should we should listen to them because I know they're doom and in our wheelhouse. And then it was just a matter of of the stars aligning. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Like. Oh yeah, the dog. <laughs> yeah, they're really barking now. <laughs> the the farmer I live um I live in Illinois and it in the literally smack dab in the middle of fields of corn and soybeans. <laughs> and the farmers are out harvesting now, so <laughs> that's probably what they're barking at. <laughs> gotcha. Well, speaking of barking, before we get into potion, uh what before we were recording uh we were talking about the differences or like what are the attributes of doom metal um that i thought would be helpful going into this episode because potion checks mostly all of those boxes so the hallmarks <clears throat> excuse me the hallmarks of doom metal and this reminds me of one of the episodes i did with martin on a fistful of faithful long ago uh the hallmarks of doom metal are usually slower tempos, low tune guitars, and a thicker or heavier sound than you would find in other subgenres. So the music and the lyrics are intended to evoke a sense of despair, dread, and impending doom. And I think really the genre kind of developed as Black Sabbath put out um, you know more unique sounding uh, tr you know, tracks and began tuning down and playing slower. And then I think it kind of evolved. But uh, that's typically the doom. The hallmark of doom is slow and low, as the Beastie Boys would say, slow and low, <laughs> that is the tempo. The tempo. And I, I like, I personally like the fact that a lot of doom, it has a lot of repetitiveness. 
you know, um, especially, you know, with the, with the guitars and they, um, you know, they play a lot of the same, you know, it's the same thing over and over and over again throughout the song. So it's, it kind of puts you in like a meditative state. And, um, and it's funny because <laughs> the subject matter lots of times is about doom and gloom and, you know, not, not so nice things, but for me, I don't know why, but for me, when I listen to it, it's very, it, it always makes me feel better. <laughs> like, I think it's the, the tone of the music, you know, that frequency, for some reason, it, when I listen to it, it always, always makes me feel better. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the beauty of music. Um, yeah. And, and by the way, I want to correct myself. The video uh, on Two Minutes to Late Night was Danzig's Snakes of Christ not a twist of cane. So I just want to, I just want to correct the record while I have my notes in front of me. Um, So Potion has, I believe two singles and an EP that we listened to. So there were six tracks total. Uh, And the first single was with the tracks Seven Sorcerers and Gravemaker. So what were your thoughts on Seven Sorcerers? Yes, really heavy, thick doom with fuzz and psychedelic infusions. The vocals have a really cool atmospheric vibe. I love this type of doom music. I like how it sounds kind of old school, but it also sounds modern at the same time. I like the magical, mystical themes. It was recent, you know, and and you gave your your definition of of doom. And how do you think that that differs from death metal? Because it seems like uh, people think a lot of people that don't listen to the different these different subgenres of heavy metal automatically put stuff. They they automatically think it's death metal. So what do you think is the difference between doom and, and death? Uh, Well, I think there's a lot of overlap. Um, I think if you're, if you're a person and you're looking for an easy differentiation, then death metal is going to have more aggressive drumming, like double bass drum kicks and something called blast beats. Uh, Also the vocal delivery is going to be probably more aggressive and growling. Um, I think, and it's probably going to be quicker that's that's probably the easiest then you know you can you can get more detailed with regard to like the type of picking in the riff and all sort of palm techniques and whatnot which is really out of my wheelhouse but um you know and then you get uh combinations of like you know uh doom and death could be like death and roll um, so you have you have doom with growled vocals and there's all sorts of combinations like I think I said to you earlier and I've said this many times most of these categories exist to give people things to argue about and also because it's easier to you know categorize music at if you're if you're you know at a at a record store or something you know you you don't simply have 600 bands in the heavy metal section you've got maybe 10 in doom and 10 in death and 10 in progressive and yeah yeah i think those are the two and then i think probably you could break it down further like lyric content and subject matter might be different but uh but really i think the the most obvious differences are going to be the tempo of the song and the style of drumming that would be that would be the the yeah. ba- most basic difference um but yeah i mean there's a ton of, right now there are learned people who are rolling their eyes being like <laughs> oh <my God." laughs> yeah well i'm ta- i'm talking you know i'm talking about people that don't even listen to heavy metal at all uh, and they just it's funny because heavy metal it seems heavy metal to them you know, to them is automatically death metal. (laughs) Right. Well, I think, I think the the death metal and and heavy metal have become synonymous more recently, you know, so people will interchangeably use them. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, there is, I mean, there is a huge difference for people in the know. Um, you know, so it is, it is interesting, you know, and of course my favorite was when I would try to, when I would have my mother on a fistful of faceful and I would explain to her like, okay, this is progressive metal. That's, that's because there, there's sort of, there's different time signature changes. It's very much like jazz. And she would say, it all sounds like Metroid to me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So there are people out there to everything will sound like Metroid, no matter what, they won't understand the nuances, but yeah. Regardless of that potion, definitely a prototypical doom metal band. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you had mentioned in your description of uh, Seven Sorcerers. Yeah. And yeah. and Doom is something that we both, I think we both are really into. So this is yeah. like, this is like totally in our wheelhouse for sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And Seven Sorcerers, when I say that, it reminds me of the, the Nights of Christmas or the Days of Christmas, Seven Swans of Swimming. <laughs> Seven Sorcerers are playing old. <laughs> so I said this track, old school doom, right from the cauldron or Hades or the depths or whatever metaphor works. Um, slow and low, that is the tempo. I, I already made that reference <laughs> to Beastie Boys. Um, I said that this is like there are times where you hear a song and you think to yourself, okay, this should be on the mantle for like the prototypical like the best example of what doom is like you i would be fine if someone was like well uh, let's put potion on the on the shelf for this because they just check all the boxes um and there's a really beautiful melodic breakdown in this in this song that i wasn't really expecting which was which was cool um it yeah they they it the the vocal delivery between them and Witchfinder General, for example, one of my favorite Doom old school Doom bands, is different. But it, I, I got the the sort of sense that they'll take the baton, like Potion is taking the baton. So that was cool. And then uh, Grave Maker, after Seven Sorcerers. Yeah, and, and I did pick up on some Sabbath-esque vibes in this song. It it feels thick and dense, like trying to wade through mud or find your way through really thick fog. The guitar, bass, and drums, they, they mesh so well together. It just creates this huge sound. And the vocals are able to cut through it, but they're not overbearing dark and nasty mean and witchy and i mean all that in a good way and the guitar at the end sounds spooky too and this definitely leaves you wanting more yeah this was another solid doom it reminded me of um sabbath bloody sabbath by black sabbath combined with lord of this world by black sabbath just the the way that the the riffs sort of melded together reminded me of those two tracks um so there's definitely influence uh on potion um and then i was thinking like in the doom category as you move as you move into the 1980s there's sort of four uh bands that people think of as being representative of that genre you've got witchfinder general Candlemass, Trouble, and St. Vitus. Um, there, are, there are other bands that people will probably suggest, but those are the four that I'm... And they're all very sort of different from each other in terms of the type of Doom they play. Like Candlemass is more of an epic sort of feel to it, um, more melodic. St. Vitus is just kind of like dirty and grungy. Um. It's it's really Saint Vitus would end up influencing Black Flag a lot, um, so it's interesting now because I was like, okay, there are elements of slow green thing that I'm like there. I would see them take the Saint Vitus position, um, all, you know, if there was going to be a new a new amalgam of four bands, and I was like, oh yeah, Potion would be Witchfinder General as I mentioned before, or you know, one of those other 
other groups. So it was really cool as it always is to like find a new band to be like, Oh yeah, well this is just going to continue my love of this music. Even though some of these other bands aren't making music anymore, but potion can just slip right in there. Yeah. So they will, de- they will definitely be in my repertoire on my uh, playlist, whatever, however you want to put it. Um, so that's it. It's just short. The first single was just two tracks. Uh, and then the next single, uh, the track, the first track was called the dead mountain. Yeah. And this is, from um, women of the wand, <laughs> uh, dead mountain. I looked at the comments <laughs> on Bandcamp, and here are some of the words that were used. Heavy, sinister, dark, provocative, delightful, ghoulish, riftastic, evil, sludgy, gnarled, grim, monstrous. This just made me smile. <laughs> uh, imagine music so good that it elicits comments <laughs> like this. The song, the song is instrumental and it, it has a great low tone and the repeating riffs. The pacing, it kind of puts you in a trance. And then the lead guitar has some really great playing at the end. Yeah, all I wrote for this was tone, period. Excuse me, would you like some tone? Question mark. <laughs> um, as soon as I heard the opening of the track, I was like, oh my God, this is like if I could if I could distill doom metal down into its essence. I was like, this is it. Like, this is the essence of Doom. They, if they made a perfume uh, of this track, it would be called, like, Essence of Doom. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I, another prototype for Doom. I mean, all I can do is sit back and just another track from this band comes, and I'm like, oh, well, this is the perfect representation. Like, let me put this in an envelope and send it to somebody for an explanation of what is great doom metal. Like what's awesome contemporary doom metal? Oh, here's Potion. Go yeah. put that in, in your CD player or on your car or on your computer or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Woman of the Wand, uh, the other single on this album. Yeah, and I... Um... I wrote, I wrote down, I wrote the, down the lyrics, um, a little bit, you know, of the lyrics, uh, which is, <laughs> like you say, so representative of, of doom. I, I looked upon your face, it's weathered marks and lines. You three sisters of fate who wield the strings of time, condemned to live inside the wretched walls. Unholy one, you need, you heed your master's call. Black ashes enchantress i rode from far and wide to take mariah's head no sympathy for cowards three witches to be bled you stalk the night your wicked deeds be done you'll burn tonight you women of the wand yeah i mean there's really (laughs) nothing you need to say it's just (laughs) it's just the perfect representation of doom like oh here here's some here's some <laughs> excellent doom for you yeah um i i wrote that uh it went right into the jam it felt like it was a continuation of the previous track dead mountain um and i feel like this would accompany a sinister tale like if you opened a leather bound volume that was about to tell you like you know it was the best of times it was the worst of times that this track would be playing in the background. Um, this one had a bit of a quicker tempo, but it still felt doomy to me. You know, like I, I, I know that some that one of the hallmarks of doom is a slower tempo, but a tempo alone does not constitute doom. And I feel like uh, that was perhaps something that a mathematician would have said while explaining proofs to a, a an 11th grade algebra class. <laughs> but, um, okay, so that was Women of the Wand, and then we're on to Oath to Flame. 
which is the, I guess, the name of the EP. Um, and the first track is called The Torch Bearer. Yeah, this song has an amazing build up. The tone that they're able to accomplish is pretty astonishing. Just when I thought it couldn't possibly get heavier, <laughs> it gets heavier. It gets, <laughs> the drumming is, is phenomenal and I can hear it, but that's not all you hear. The, the, the mixing, it's mixed really well. At the end of the song is so good. I can see the, I can totally see the crowd just completely headbanging to this. Yeah, for this one, I wrote dynamite opening riff and killer atmosphere. Hold, 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 and then the dam bursts like the, the build up to the song. Um, and then it reminded me of a, a scene in King of the Hill where Hank Hill accompanies his friend Dale Gribble to a basket weaving uh, se se seminar or, or, or educational, whatever. And Hank puts together like an incredible basket that the teacher is like complimenting him on. And Hank says... I just used the tools and the time allotted. Like there was no secrets to how he made such a, a tremendous basket. And I was like, okay, Potion is not reinventing the wheel here. They're not doing anything uh, that's new. They're just taking the tools of good doom metal and putting them together and just d delivering a dynamite jam. You know, they're not, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I, What they're doing is really wonderful with just what's out there. Like anyone can get a guitar and a bass and drums and try to make this music. Like the, I, this, this didn't sound like it was overladen with like effects pedals or, you know, pro tools or anything like that. But it was just like, here are three great musicians crafting a, a really great song and it's just going to blow your mind. Yeah. So it's like they know. do it. It's like they do it at a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but it, you know, it's sort of like, um, <laughs> it reminded me, uh, I once listened to, uh, a, an interview with Ian Mackay of the band, um, minor threat and Fugazi. And he talked about once playing his bass guitar in front of, um, Daryl Jennifer from the band Bad Brains, and it didn't sound very good. And he was like, oh, it must be the guitar or the amp. And then he gave it to Daryl, who then proceeded to play it, and it sounded incredibly well. <laughs> and Ian was like, oh, it was clearly the player. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I feel like the instruments in the hands of this band, they're going to do some really magical things. So, and then the last track we had is hallucination rights. Yeah, so this is the grand finale, the last song. I did find it interesting that each of their albums has two songs on it. I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, whatever they whatever they put out next, whatever they come up with next. I'm definitely looking forward to it and I just I just feel like, you know, we want more. If you love guitar riffs, this song has awesome riffs. And I can just imagine them playing live and like the build, like with each song they play, the building just slowly falling apart <laughs> piece by piece because of the sound is <laughs> just completely destroying it. This just, it completely blew me away and I'm now a huge fan. <laughs> awesome. Well, that, what you just said reminded me of a uh, Dirk Diggler in the hot tub where he says, and then the sign is just so big and bright that it catches fire. It says, <laughs> Potion is playing so loud and so doomy that the club just disintegrates. It just, yeah, it just disintegrates. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hallucination writes, I wrote, it complements the previous track as their other songs do. You know, the two, the two tracks on the single tend to go really well together. Um, and what, what was interesting is like, the the vocals the singer's vocals are a little throatier than you'd think with like a lot of the operatic doom for example um but this works the vocal delivery for this 
these songs work really well. It works in conjunction with the music they're playing. Um, and I tried, I, I thought of that because I tried to decipher the lyrics to this song and I think I got them wrong. I think I, what I heard was I walk the corners of your mind and then I rewound it again and he doesn't say mind. So it could be kind or bind. I, I'm not sure, but I like to think he's saying I walk the corners of your mind because that's just a cool visual. And then it ends with you never answered. And I was just like, okay, I, this is, yeah, that's awesome. But uh, I could be completely wrong about all of it because <laughs> lyrical interpretation is not my, my strong suit. <laughs> um, all right, cool. And then do you want to do Ain't or Mothman sure. and the Thunderbirds? Wait, let's do Ain't. Okay, so Ain't from Abruzzo, Italy. Uh, we don't know if it's a one-person operation. Uh, I we don't know. Do <laughs> it could we be. Think so. It could be. It could be one person behind this masterminding it. There might be more. Uh, the album is called Lo-Fi Demo. And what what are your what are your thoughts? Well, I like how on their Bandcamp page they say they're politically incorrect. The names of the songs are pretty cool. Christ Away, Dirty World, Stand the Dominoes on End, Flashes, Clowns and Street Motherfuckers, Narcissistic Christ, Mantra for Inner Light, and Flashes, Clowns and Whores. <laughs> Short songs, punk rock. It's got that punk rock attitude, um, alternative rock. And I think it's just one guy. I don't know. Stefano D'Angelo. I was um, talking to our new carrier at the office, and he likes punk. So I'm definitely going to recommend this to him. Um, you know, I told him that you like punk, too. So. Maybe I can get him to watch this show. Sure. <laughs> we've we've done a few a few different punk punk bands. Um, I like this a lot. It, um, admittedly, I don't listen to a lot of punk, but I'm I'm glad you recommended this. My favorite song on the record is "Mantra for Inner Light." It's a little more melodic, and I really like the guitar playing in it. Yeah, I would say this is this would fit in nicely to like a garage rock, grunge, punk type thing. Like if you wanted to combine, uh, play, make a playlist, it would fit in nicely with any of those genres. Um, I also like the fact that the they're willing to push the edge of the envelope with the subject matter. Uh, you know, obviously my favorite title was Flashes, Clones, and Street Motherfuckers. <laughs> Um, and that reminded me of uh, my brother was telling me when he was in uh, medical school that a lot of times you would get, um, pe you know, you'd get like homeless people or people who would come in who would be able to tolerate like he I think one way he put it, I think he said, if you tried to do the amount of drugs that we gave them for, for, to help it would, you would overdose. Like you your body wouldn't be able to take it, but they have just adapted to, it was, it was an, it was incredible. Um, so with, when I read flashes, clones and street motherfuckers, I was like, Oh, perhaps he's talking about the same group of people. Probably not. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, it was excellent, straight up rock and roll, really provocative subject matter. Um, but yeah, great, great music. I think you could listen, you could be a fan of any music and like this. It's really accessible, um, even though it's uh, really trying to sort of push the edge. But m musically, it's it's really accessible. And then finally, we have Mothman and the Thunderbirds vs. World Eaters. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, they're um, 
They're doing a, a split EP. It will be released October 28th. So it's going to be available on streaming, and then they're going to have a limited run of cassettes. Uh, Mothman and the Thunderbirds is a project by Alex Parkinson, who does vocals, guitars, and bass. World Eaters is David Gupta on vocals, guitars, bass, and synth, and Winter Stomp on drums. I just love that name. <laughs> um, they're, so Mothman and the Thunderbirds is in Philadelphia. And then um, World Eaters is out of Ontario, Canada. And then um, I read for World Eaters, there's also a collaboration with crowdsourced gang vocals from Twitter's metal scene. <laughs> they, they're given credit on their Bandcamp page, which you'll be able to see when it's released. Um, since it hasn't been released yet, I put mothman's um last album on our playlist and i did find some world eaters and i put that on our playlist too just so you can kind of get an idea what they sound like you know before before this comes out um the mothman and the thunderbird songs on the split are rusty shackleford shackleford <laughs> thank you <laughs> which I thought had a really cool groove. And then there's, there's some, it sounded like some experimental stuff in there too, which I thought was, was pretty cool. And then, um, is it Nephilim? Nephilim? I think so. <laughs> it has um, massive drums, very fast guitar playing. And I thought it had some thrash elements in there. So this is high energy. It's fun. And I'm really looking forward to its release, which is going to be on the 28th. Yeah, Mothman and the Thunderbirds do a cover of 96 Quite Bitter Beings, which is available that you can find. Also, I think you'll be able to hear some of the tracks on this album on Bandcamp um, before, before it's released. But... Um, yeah, so anyway, Rusty Shackelford, surprisingly, is the name of Dale Gribble's alias on King of the Hill. So oh. that's, that's how I knew that. Um, okay. So, and again, is that synchronicity? Is this the universe making things happen? Because I quoted <laughs> King of the Hill earlier, and now there's another King <laughs> of the Hill reference. We'll never know. Um Yeah, Rusty Shackelford reminded me sort of of, because um, there's electronic uh, music involved. It was sort of like if the track "Let the Bodies Hit the Floor," if they if that was combined with electronic, like Dead Mouse. Um, so if you're into any of those genres, but there's a ton more going on. It's re it was really hard to kind of articulate uh, one specific style, but uh, it was sort of like heavy metal meets electronic. That's how I viewed it. Um, and then, yeah, either Nephilim or Nephilim, um, is more death metal and blast beats, since that's what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, with some electronic, and then it sort of becomes more operatic groove metal, what I, what I felt I would call operatic groove metal, where it hit like a, a groovy, like a groove, a riff, a met metallic riff that was groovy. I just wanted to say the word groovy a lot. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Mothman and the Thunderbirds Verse World Leaders when it releases later this month. Um, check out uh, other of Mothman and the Thunderbirds albums. 96 Quite Bitter Beings, uh, I've heard the cover of. It's really good. And then, uh, yeah, Ain't. Check out Lo-Fi Demo. And be sure to add Potion to your uh, to your playlist yes definitely speaking of playlists check out the playlist that heather put together for this episode um before hopefully before you've watched this episode you've already done that because you've learned that i wait till the bitter end to uh remind you to do that <laughs> but um but yeah this was uh this was i you know all of these episodes i keep discovering new music that 
my playlist is just expanding exponentially. Yes. Yeah. Well, Pretty soon we're going to, we're going to have playlists that, that go on forever. I know <laughs> it's infinity. Yes. There's so much of this music out there and we're just scratching the surface. Yep. It's a drop in the bucket. Yes. But, um, so anyway, that's it for episode 48. We're almost at 50. I know. But, uh, and th- th- so this weekend, Saturday, check out the first annual Happy Hour with Heather and Guestable featuring uh, Afghan Hayes, Clay Soldiers, Death and Gloria, Grave Next Door, and Building Upon the Revelation, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, going through probably till about 9.30 p.m., uh, and then Sunday the 23rd is Heather's birthday. Yay. So feel free to uh, send her a happy birthday wish or wishes, <laughs> multiple. <laughs> so it's going to be a great couple of days. Yes, it's going to be fun. So thank you as always. We hope you're all doing well out there and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. And enjoy... Uh, Enjoy this jam. These these jams. These jams, yeah.